Hello everyone. My name is Kathleen Pally. Welcome to my storytelling podcast, Journey with Story. I've called it that because I think stories are a lot like journeys. They usually involve some sort of discovery about other places, other people, and even about ourselves. I love stories, reading, writing, telling, or listening to them. And I first fell in love with stories as a wee girl growing up in Scotland. Long before I could read or write, I listened to stories on the radio, and that was how I fell in love with the music of her language and how words can paint pictures in her mind. Our very first story, then, is also about a girl who loves stories and uses her love of stories to help her make a long road short and a king's heart sing. It's called Maggie, the Farmer's Daughter, and I wrote it some years ago, and it was published in Cricket Magazine. Let's take a journey, then, with Maggie, the Farmer's Daughter. There once lived a poor farmer's daughter called Maggie. Day after day, Maggie worked in the fields with her father, learning how to plough and plant and reap. She loved the tug of the wind in her hair, the warmth of the sun on her back, and the smell of damp earth clinging to her skin. But most of all, she loved to listen to the stories her father told her as they worked side by side on the land. Tell me another story, father, she begged. He'd lean on his spade and in a gentle lilting voice begin telling her yet another story his words melting into her skin like soft spring rain. As he spoke, Maggie saw pictures in her mind of heather-dappled mountains, secret caves and wishing wells. She saw a holy tree and pheasants rising in the dawn, their feathers the colours of fire and forests and moonlight. When he finished, Maggie always felt a tingling in her head and a stirring in her heart. Stop filling the child's head with your foolish stories, chided the farmer's wife. Maggie should be at home with her sisters, learning woman's work. What's to become of a girl who doesn't know how to cook or sew or keep a house? What man will ever take her as his wife? Leave the girl alone, said the farmer. Our Maggie is a child of the earth and the sky. She knows how to hope and dream and love. She knows how to make her heart sing and her mind wonder. That should be enough for the man our daughter weds. As she grew older, Maggie began making up her own stories and told them to anyone who'd listen. But her mother and sisters only laughed at her. Get away with you, Maggie, scolded her mother. What use are stories when there's bread to be baked and clothes to be mended? I've no time for your stories cried her sister Tess. I need to sew my dress and make a garden of flowers for my hair. Stories, scoffed her sister Martha. Why only children and foolish people listen to such imaginings about what might have been or could have been. But whenever Maggie went to the village to buy some seeds or to sell a bag of grain, there was always someone who'd call out, Hey Maggie, come sit with us and tell us a story. And so, with the day's work done, Maggie would sit under the sprawling willow tree while people gathered around her to listen to her stories. She told them of a land where time stood still, where lions lay down with lambs, where trees danced and rivers sang. She told them of children who saw their dreams in the sparkle of stars and heard secrets in the whisper of the winds. She told them of girls who could walk on water and soar through the air on eagles' wings. As her listeners lost themselves in the tales she spun, Maggie saw a light in their faces, a golden glow of wonder glimmering in the dim twilight. Later, as they walked home together, Maggie's father stroked her hair and murmured, Aye, Maggie, you have the gift of words. Guard it well, my child, for one day it will set you free. Now it so happened that when Maggie had seen sixteen summers come and go, word came to the village that the young king of their land was searching for a wife. In order to find someone who would be able to help him rule the kingdom wisely, the king had prepared a task. 
Whoever can do this task, said the king, shall prove herself worthy to be queen, and if she will have me, then I will ask her to be my bride. On the first day of summer, the village maidens gathered excitedly by the bridge at the edge of the village to learn what the king's task would be. The road before me leads to my castle, said the king. It is a long and winding road and is more than one day's walk from here. The task is this. I want someone to make that road shorter for me. Huh? A gasp <gasps> rose from the crowd. But that's impossible, cried Maggie's mother. Who ever heard of such a thing? What's the use in making a road shorter, wailed Tess. Doesn't he care whether his wife has beauty or charm? The man must be mad, cried Martha. Who'd want to marry such a madman, even if he is the king? Then Maggie's mother and her sisters flounced off home, disgusted with the king and his ridiculous task. One by one, the other girls in the village left too, for none of them knew how to do what the king had asked. Soon, only Maggie and her father remained. Can it be that you know how to make the road shorter? asked the king. Maggie saw the sadness in his eyes. Yes, she said, I think I can. Taking the king's hand in hers, Maggie began the long walk toward the castle. As they walked, Maggie told the king a story, the greatest story she had ever told. The sun rose high above the treetops, and still Maggie talked, and still the king listened. Lost in her tale, he laughed and he frowned, he wept and he cried aloud with joy. The afternoon shadows lengthened and still Maggie talked and still the king listened. Dusk fell and a nightingale began to sing. The world smelled of tree shadows and wet heather as Maggie wove her web of words and the king listened. The moon shone and the stars sparkled and the miles passed by as they walked together hand in hand. When the cock crowed and the dewdrops glistened in the early morning sunshine, they came at last to the king's castle, and Maggie's tale ended in the golden light of dawn. The king fell to his knees and cried out with joy, Thank you, my sweet and noble lady. Indeed, you have made my road shorter, and you have made my heart sing and my spirit soar. Tell me now that you will be my bride and queen forevermore. And so it was that Maggie and the king were married amidst great rejoicing. From that day onward, they sent a storyteller to every town and village in their kingdom so that at night, as people sat around their fires, they could listen to the tales of old. And so they too learned how to hope and dream and love. And though there were stories of plenty, there was none that was loved so well or told so often as that of Maggie the farmer's daughter, who made a long road short and a king's heart sing. Do you have a favourite story that you like to hear or tell? Maybe you could ask someone in your family if they have a favourite story from when they were a child. How is it the different or the same as yours? And maybe you could even memorise a story to tell a friend or a sibling. Did Maggie the farmer's daughter paint some pictures in your mind? If so, why don't you find a piece of paper and draw or paint those pictures? Send it to me and I'll share some of my favourites on my website. Cheerio then, join me next time for Journey with Story. <laughs> <laughs>